Good evening. My name is Austin Davis. I'm the Government Affairs Manager with the Lake Champlain Chamber and your host of this evening's Live at 525. The Lake Champlain Chamber is a regional chamber of commerce that serves the greater Burlington area, including uh, most all of Chittenden County and up into the islands, Franklin County, some of the Moyle. But we also have programming that uh, covers the entire state. Uh, and one of those programs that serves the entire state uh, is Launch VT. And to talk about Launch VT this evening, I have with me my colleague, Lauren Pass. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me tonight. Thanks for joining. Excited to be here. So what is Launch VT? Tell me a little bit more about it. Um, what is Launch VT? So we provide business acceleration services to entrepreneurs who are in the early stages of starting really phenomenal startups. And what I mean to say by that is these are these are early stage businesses that are ripe to scale. They have a high degree of viability, um, and we think that they're going to create an important impact for the Vermont economy. So growing jobs, tax revenues, um, creating great incentives for folks to stay here after college or be attracted to the state um, and come and work in businesses that are growing quickly and creating a lot of value. So there's a lot of businesses out there. Yeah. Um, what what makes it so what's your minimum bar what brings one to your attention and we'll pull one into your program because sure. it's, it's competitive yeah we are we are in a, a competitive program um, this year we actually had double the amount of applicants than ever before um, our success rate for folks actually getting into the program is less than 10 percent so we are definitely a competitive program um, trying to find a, find the best of the best businesses and we have three uh, pillars that we're actually using to ascertain um, when we're going through all those applications who do we think really has the legs to to build our economy and so that will be just what I mentioned viability um, looking at who the founders are um, what are their expertise what is their product or service that they're trying to grow and, and sell. Um, scalability, like I said, these are the ones that need to, to really, really become big businesses or have the legs to become big businesses. So rather than like, you know, a small mom and pop shop or maybe a, a gift store somewhere, these are businesses that can eventually employ 50, 100, maybe even, you know, bigger than that types of businesses. Could so. almost be an anchor business that provides, you yeah. know, the, the support and stability for the mom and pop shops around it. Absolutely. But it's that and it's also businesses that are um, representative of really the new economy. So as we all know, Vermont, we've got maple syrup, skiing, hospitality, retail, we've got that in spades. Um, what we're really trying to do is create businesses that are um, going to create like that big lasting value. So mm -hmm. we have some amazing businesses here that have just come up in the past decade. Look at Beta, for example. I mean, they're totally crushing it. That's a great example of a business that um, grows, grew tremendously quickly, attracted a lot of investment um, from our investment community here and is now, you know, creating a lot of value for our entire nation and becoming a household name. To be clear, they're not one of your alumni. However, you have some pretty notable alumni. You want to brag we, for a second? Yeah, I do. I do. Well, we, um, we've done some really cool things. So actually, can I just show you a couple of pictures yeah. from our most recent demo night? That'd be so, great. Um, this is really what we do, and then I can explain sort of how this feeds into our awesome alumni. So this is a picture from demo night, just happened two weeks ago to the day, as a matter of fact. This is at Hula which is um, an amazing co-working space right here on the shore of Lake Champlain. It is a phenomenal building. It is carbon neutral, and it is attracting the coolest businesses out there. Um, and a lot of our alumni, as a matter of fact, actually have offices in Hula. So we, we hosted, or excuse me, Hula hosted demo night for us this past year. You can see the gentleman who's uh, actually sort of looking at, at the screens. He's actually one of our founders from this year's cohort. He was presenting his pitch to the audience. Um, what happens in our accelerator is that uh, folks go through a two-month program drinking from the water, holes, uh, water hose, learning all the tools and tricks of the trade in order to get their business ready for major investment. And then at the same time, too, learning about how you pitch your business in a way that's going to help you actually capitalize your business. So at demo night, Folks are presenting to an audience of 200 plus, many of which are in the investment community, 
banks, uh, alternative lenders, and so forth. Um, and they find ways to put money into these businesses and they grow. So a couple of our, our notable ones recently, as a matter of fact, and I can show their no names in a moment, we've had two major um, industry acquisitions of our past alumni. So I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown. Um, over the past 10 cohorts, we just had our 10th one that wrapped up in June, um, we have accelerated 71 businesses. So again, those are businesses that applied, got in, went through a very tough two-month uh, you know, experience learning those tricks that they're going to use to to raise money, and then going through demo night. So, of that 71, 50 to this day remain open with the lights on and operating. Um, and then, of those 59, have had major strategic acquisitions, which really wow. creates value for our economy. And the most recent were this year: Packetized Energy was acquired by Energy Hub, um, and uh, Easy Probate was just um, acquired by Trust and Will. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, there are a lot of accelerators out there that do this kind of work. What makes Launch VT unique? Well, we're unique because, first of all, we sit in Chittenden County, which obviously we have, we do touch other counties, certainly, and we attract entrepreneurs to come into our program statewide. But a part of what really makes us special is that Right here, we have a high saturation of businesses and infrastructure that are capable of supporting an entrepreneurship ecosystem, which is really what Launch VT is trying to, to harness and put a lot of attention on. Mm -hmm. So our startup community is where um, business are being created and made um, and funded, um, and they're typically innovators. So we're getting a lot of technology and businesses that are pushing us, you know, into the future and creating jobs that are much longer lasting and typically higher paid. So being where we are geographically, we attract a lot of folks from across the state and we can also integrate with a lot of the business services that are really necessary in order to get started. So one of the things that's supportive to an entrepreneurship ecosystem are things like lawyers and accountants and media experts and consultants that if you have them close to you, if you're saturated, um, and what we like to say in entrepreneurship, if you have serendipitous collisions with other folks who mm -hmm. are feeding into your ecosystem, you're going to have sort of that lucky moment. You're going to be at the right place, the right time to meet the right person in order to find some type of value creator for your business. And it can even be as simple as just waiting in line to get a cup of coffee. And it just so happens that the person standing ahead of you is, oh, that IP lawyer you've been looking for. And, mm -hmm. and you can, you know, create value right then and there. Well, fantastic. So run us through a little bit more about um, what happened this year, the cohort. Yeah. I will, I will gladly do that. And I'm going to actually, this is when I shamelessly show people what we've been up to. Um, here is a gentleman, Kidder Spader. He's one of our alumni from this year. Um, Sloggin is his latest venture. Um, Kidder is actually a serial, serial entrepreneur. He founded a pet um, brand called Kurgo, which he actually exited from that brand, so built it into a successful national brand, sold it. He's now started Sloggin. Sloggin is its very cool modular setup for your your car, where you it's sort of like a Thule, but a more modular component, much more. You can mm. retrofit it basically for whatever it is that you're trying to to bring with you on your adventures. Um, next up is Chandler Merch. He's an amazing founder. Taco is really exciting, has some very cool intellectual property behind it. Um, he also has relationships already with PopSocket, which if you're uncool like me, you find out is actually everybody's favorite iPhone case along with OtterBox. And so he's integrated his technology with these two big names that actually you can bring um, Alexa with you on the go wherever you go. You don't need to unlock your phone. You can basically have this you know, constant um, accessible AI with you on the go. It's extremely cool. And he's also um, has a, a great relationship with Amazon as well. So I, I expect a lot from Chandler. Um, Bivo, these are, oh, love these bottles. Cyclists out there, get your Bivo bottle. Um, these are amazing. They're green, carbon neutral. They've been verified by some really fabulous third party um, folks here who have, you know, can tell us that these are um, environmentally very safe. They're aluminum bicycle 
bottles that actually deliver water faster than at the rate of a plastic bottle. Um, even though you can't squeeze them. It's very, very cool. Hmm. Literally an invention. So. I feel like we're creating a shopping list for me with these slides. I'll just send them to me after and I'll... Oh yeah, I go. buy everything from everybody. <laughs> I, yeah. But it's it's so worth it because these are these are these are the cutting edge products of the future. So mm -hmm. right here in Vermont, um, this is Claudia Zafert. She founded a company called Evermind with two um, co-founders. They have actually created a an AI driven um, therapy for depression on the go. So wow. yeah, really cool using technology that's been backed by NASA. So it was originally an, a platform that was going to be used for. Uh, mental health therapies for folks who are on the in International Space Station. Wow. <laughs> and she's managed to integrate it so folks on Earth can use it. Extremely cool. That is incredible. Yeah. Really bringing it down to Earth. And what a time, too, with the pandemic. Oh, and yeah. So many people looking for mental health assistance. A hundred percent. She has done the math. And right here in Vermont, as a matter of fact, um, it was determined that we lose somewhere in the order of uh, half a billion dollars a year. Our businesses do, actually, because folks are, you know, really feeling the heat from COVID, feeling depressed. It's, mm -hmm. you know, workplaces have changed. Um, all of those sort of humps that, can, that happen in the workplace really affect employers with absenteeism or folks not being as productive as usual. So um, Claudia's product is actually being sold to employers mm -hmm. that they can provide this service to their employees so that they can have the support services that they need on the go um, and hopefully save not just Vermont, but the greater American economy um, from the losses that are accrued from absenteeism and, and lack of productivity. Well, that's Usually fantastic. related to mental health. Yeah, that's that was, incredible. she's very cool. Uh, John Brawley from, we know him as Vermont Shrimp Guy. Um, his business is also Sweet Sound Aquaculture right in Charlotte um, at Will Rapp's Farm, um, Earth Keep Farm Common, which is a very cool place. Mm -hmm. um, he has figured out how to grow shrimp right here in the state of Vermont. Ergo it. Vermont shrimp, and they're delicious. And this yeah. is coming from someone who grew up in town called Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> I'm very snooty about my shellfish, and I have to say, this is good shellfish. And oh, yeah. you can find him in stores already. Um, really? City Market. Um, he's selling product to Hotel Vermont um, and a lot of the really great caterers here as well. We served his shrimp cakes at demo night. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I was so unfortunately not able to be there, but that's <laughs> incredible. And, you know, we always love being able to now sh shove this towards people who, who say don't eat seafood in a landlocked state. <laughs> yeah, no, you should do that here. But in fact, what was really cool about, you know, being a director of Launch VT and working with all these companies, like I, I come and I try and share what I know about entrepreneurship, but, you know, information is a two-way street. And I have learned so much from the actual founders of these businesses. And, mm -hmm. and one thing that I learned from John, which, I don't know if I'll be ordering, <laughs> taking food out of the, the ice department of the grocery store or whatever anymore, because I found out that the vast majority of our shrimp is actually coming in from Thailand, and the U.S. government only manages to test about 1% to 2% of it. Oh, wow. And, of course, it has a really big carbon footprint by yeah. the time it gets here. So the awesome thing about Vermont shrimp is that it's super fresh, it tastes incredible, um, and it's safer. I'm all so, for it. Yeah. That's awesome. So what else do we have? Is that it? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, more? but wait. There's <laughs> wait, more. There's we, more. Had a, a, we had a cohort of seven. Okay. So we're, we're almost done. Am I taking too long? <laughs> no, keep no, going. No, I can just keep I just, blabbing. Each one's better than the last, and it's, it's kind of surprising. You, you know what's funny is that we gave our judges this year, and this is a big, like, two-hour event. We gave the judges um, 25 minutes to deliberate this year and they still went over because they were all such phenomenal businesses that have so much future here. Um, it was hard to, it was hard to like narrow down who was yeah. gonna be the winner, but Little Pataka is an incredible company. Um, and she actually did win a prize. She, she won one of, our, one of our two cash prizes. So Akshata Nayak and Little Pataka walked away with $5,000 that night. She got the Audience Choice Award. Um, Little Pataka is adorable. So children's books that really um, promote anything and everything to everyone. So uh, traditionally, apparently, again, you learn a lot when you do these things. 
the vast majority of kids in children's stories and media are typically, you know, the majority or, you know, they're white kids or they're animals or they're anything but kids who look slightly different or are typically underrepresented. So she's created this whole world of people and children and faces and clothes and traditions that you don't always get in children's media. Mm. Um, and it's adorable. I have bought her books for my niece. Really, really cute. That's awesome. Yeah. Representation matters. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, actually, one of the things that Akshata said that, like, when they were practicing their pitch decks, because we had, we, you have to practice. Mm -hmm. They have seven minutes to get out there and make a compelling pitch to an audience. This is Vermont Shark Tank, effectively. And uh, when Akshata actually practiced her pitch in front of me for the first time, I actually teared up because mm. she talks about being a woman who looks like her with a name that sounds like her in a place like Vermont, hers in a place like Vermont is so unusual and so special and it it was really cool she's awesome that's if you have awesome. kids out there I highly recommend little Pataka you can get them I know, on we should have been doing this closer to the holiday season so we could you know just Seriously. create a shopping list for folks but <laughs> I should have brought I should have brought their prototypes in oh I have had a whole thing going on oh, fantastic we you know we could change the name it's like QVC but Q, <laughs> get it QVT QVT we could have live a, at 525 we could take calls live we'll see what we can do closer to the holiday season okay but, but we have more. Here. But wait. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> there is more. Last but not least, Wasted. This was actually, he, okay, so Thor and Brophy, they were the gentlemen who were in the, the, the cohort. Of course, you can see it's actually a group of four. Um, but these guys are awesome. They were our grand prize winner this year, so they walked away with 15000 in cash. They were the folks that the judges ultimately gave the award to. Um, really cool idea. I don't know how much I can say this on live television. Mm. But it, they, it, they've made the world's best looking porta potty. Okay. Um, and when you use it, it separates everything. Oh, okay. So, fun fact apparently, humans are the only animal. Again, I learned this from the founders. I never knew this beforehand. Um, we are the only animal that will pee and poo in the same location. Mm. Yeah, which makes sense when I think about my dogs. They never. Yeah, There's no, I was just think, right? that's like immediately what I went to is my, my dog doesn't do that. So Hey, man, they know where it's at. So <laughs> anyway, so we're broken animals and we do it in the same place. And apparently okay. in like por porta potties, when you leave that festering, it's actually quite bad for the environment. And then also okay. emptying those things are quite bad for the environment because mm. they put a lot of additives in there. Okay. Um, but by keeping your way separate, um, they actually make it to really high quality fertilizer for farmers, so. Okay, all right. Whole different level of you are what you eat. Yeah. But it's really cool, and and they won, so. That's incredible. Yeah, pretty pretty neat group of people this year, so. So everyone's a winner though, really. Everyone's a winner, yes. You too can be a winner. Just apply to Launch VT, and um, the beauty of it is that as an accelerator, like I said, we're going to push people through. We're going to teach them what they need. They're going to go to demo night. They get to showcase their businesses. Even if they don't win cash, they're still up front and center in front of the investment community. Um, and there are plenty of people who walk up to these founders after the show, even if they didn't win, and they say, I'm interested in your business. I might write you a check. That's all great. Um, but at the end of the day, Everyone leaves with something, not just the potential to raise money, but also a lot of the services that come as in-kind prizes. Yeah. Um, so we have an amazing relationship with a lot of stakeholders here in the area. And um, we actually give gifts of business services from our stakeholders. So um, Gallagher Flynn is one that comes to mind immediately. Um, a lot of our, some of our, our lawyers here as well, uh, Merit and Merit has been a great supporter. They actually will gift their services um, and we give them as prizes. So the nice part about my job is when we had graduation about a week after demo night, I also got to divide these gifts out across the cohort. Which and that's cool. pretty unique for an accelerator, right? I mean, instead yeah. of just saying we're going to give you money and you don't know where that money necessarily goes, right. you're saying what, what you need is this assistance. You need intellectual property lawyer. You need an accountant. You need someone in yeah. marketing. And you're able to 
connect them with that. A hundred percent. You know, if you, if let's say you have an innovation and you're looking to support your, or excuse me, protect your innovation with a patent, um, it is not cheap. Um, IP lawyers are not cheap. So, if, you know, if someone were to give their time, sometimes $5,000 worth of their time, if you're a cash-strapped startup mm-hmm. and if you didn't win 15 grand, that's going to go really far. Um, so it's, it's terrific, that part and of the That's program. a huge win for that, that local established firm because that could be a long-term client or that could propel them to a spotlight when that person has success as well, correct? Yeah, a hundred percent. So um, many of our stakeholders have told us, like, ah, we love Launch VT. They, our prizes often turn into to long-term client relationships. So it's a, a little bit of scratching the back of everybody. That's fantastic. So tell me a little bit more about just the overall plan of these startups coming through. Yeah, it's a kind of more of a plan to exit model. Yeah, so it's a little bit different for everybody. It depends on really the size of their business, where they are in their go-to-market strategy, um, and really where they're at in terms of taking cash. So some businesses are better suited for, um, for example, bank financing from a loan, sometimes alternative funding, for example, revenue, um, revenue-backed financing. So if you already are expecting a lot of money to come in from sales, some lenders will actually give you money based on the fact that you have accounts receivable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there is selling equity. So we've, you know, for those of us who think about the Bay Area and, you know, angel investors and venture capital. Um, those are folks who actually buy shares in a business and it's, it's that money that's used to capitalize. Mm-hmm. Um, there's never one specific type of thing. Every business is like a snowflake. They're all a little bit different and have different types of cap tables. So different types of ways that they're capitalizing their business. Mm-hmm. So what is going on in the Vermont ecosystem right now? What's Broadly, outside of Launch VT even. Well, so we are what some would call a nascent startup ecosystem. Um, we are effectively, and, and this is, it's, this is, here's the truth of the matter. We are basically a rounding error in the world of venture capital. So right now, Vermont stands at 40th and not just the nation, but across all um, U.S. territories. We're at about 40th right now in terms of venture capital deal flow. Mm. So we're very, very small. We, I think we move somewhere like 0.06% of the venture capital deals in the United States. But um, there's a lot of interesting things that are going on in our startup economy right now, which is, I think, really invigorating. Um, what we do in Vermont, I think better than most places, is sustainability, trying to create businesses that can be leveraged as forces for good. Um, and we have more and more businesses like those coming online. A lot of our Launch VT alumni spin off some type of positive externality to just being in business. So um, beyond just making a profit for themselves, they're making the world a slightly better place for certain people, certain environmental um, needs, it's, it's something very special to Vermont. We have more B Corps here per capita than any other state, which is something very unique. Very unique to the ecosystem, something yeah. that could probably attract more capital in years to come. That's right. We have a thematic component to our ecosystem, and that's actually really important. Hmm. So what can folks do if they want to support that ecosystem? Well, Launch VT is a 501c3, and if you want to invest into your economy, Launch VT is one way to do it. So, folks out there, something to remember, um, tax-deductible donation. Uh, another thing that you can do to try and support Launch VT is just to go out and actually support the businesses that, that um, graduate from us. A lot of our, our alumni are out there and, be, like I said, becoming household names. I, I personally use a lot of the products. You can go onto our website and see who our alumni is. Literally, main page, you scroll down to the bottom and you can see all these really cool businesses that have come out of the accelerator. Um, that is certainly a great way to support them. Um, and, and come out and check out what we have in our, you know, our ecosystem, like Hula, for example. Again, it's a, a really cool business. Check it out. See what entrepreneurship looks like in Vermont. I can't think of a better way to do that. Um, and, and be aware of what's coming down the pipeline. Awesome. And get involved with your chamber. Thank you, as always, yes. <laughs> and so if you want to find more information on the Lake Champlain Chamber and Launch VT, you can find that just uh, 
we have that in the banner there, lccvermont.org. Um, you know, really, the chamber is about establishing connect, uh, connections between local businesses, nonprofits. You know, working with these businesses, with meeting their needs, they're each unique, and and really, you know, doing a lot to tell the story of Vermont entrepreneurship and everything this place has to offer. Yeah, yeah, no, the Lake Champlain Chamber is pretty special. So, so I'm biased, of course. Of course. <laughs> so, what else though do you think is on the horizon in terms of needs, wants, wishes for our local entrepreneurial? ecosystem? Sure. Um, we cannot have enough people. Uh, absolutely. One of the things that we need is, like I said earlier, saturation. Um, the more folks are coming here with plans to start a business, the better. It all feeds off of each other. Um, and investment as well. So one of the things that I think is important about where we're at is from the standpoint that if you imagine a portfolio and manage, manager in New York who's trying to get some really interesting alternative investors for their client, particularly in the green space or in a way that they are doing some more impact with their portfolio, I hope they're looking here to Burlington, right? Mm -hmm. Like look to Vermont. Um, and that can go in a lot of different directions. The same with entrepreneurs. If someone um, way across the United States has a great idea possibly in the green en energy space, and they think to themselves, I gotta pick up and move to Vermont because that's where my people are gonna be and the funders are gonna be and they're all gonna understand what I'm trying to do with my business. Um, if we can keep working on that thematic component that I just mentioned and mm -hmm. getting people to come for that, that's gonna spur Pair that with the high quality of life and just everything Very else the quality. place has to, yeah. to offer. You got a really winning package there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, entrepreneurs, want um, good restaurants, good coffee shops, first chair, an opportunity to go sailing on top of working hard. So yeah, we just need more homes. <laughs> well, uh, at this point, we'll see if we have any viewer questions coming in. Don't look like it. I any answered everyone's questions in advance. Yeah, just way ahead of time. Any, <laughs> other, any other closing thoughts? Ah, yes. Well, um, I'm looking forward to actually expanding Launch VT now into the future. So um, absolutely, we are known for our accelerator, but going into um, the next few years, I'll be scoping some interesting ways that we can actually work with our existing businesses here in the state. So sort of beyond Burlington's startup economy and looking out to some of the farther flung, flung areas that have great businesses, but could probably use some training. Um, to, to stay current and up with the times and make sure that their businesses are every bit as resilient as those that we have here in Burlington. And if any businesses are watching, uh, when does your application for the Launch VT next cohort open? Great question. So applications will open in uh, early 2023, so usually end of January, early February. Um, applications take about a month to a month and a half for us to review and the accelerator will restart um, in April. Fantastic. So, time well, to plan. <laughs> if you want any more information on that or the Lake Champlain Chamber, like I said, the website is lccvermont.org. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lauren, for you. joining me today, telling us more about LaunchVT and all the work you're doing to create this really exciting ecosystem and, and push these, these uh, startups you know, to the forefront. Yeah. Well, we are the future, so come and stop by and see us sometime. Demonites next year. Well, <laughs> thank you. That's all for today. As, as I said before, my name is Austin Davis, and with me was Lauren Bass, and uh, we'll sign off there. <laughs>